Uh, my name is Major Melissa Busby Stiles. I am stationed at Headquarters AMC Air Mobility Command. I work in the Command Surgeon's Office. My duty title is Grand Street of In Route Care Clip Cooperation. Uh, the Transportation Isolation System is basically an isolation unit similar to the one that they have in medical facilities, in biocontainment units, um, but this one is transportable. It was built in response to the Ebola crisis in the 2014-2015 era and was designed by the DOD under the guidance of the uh, Department of State because we were sending so many DOD members over to Western Africa to treat the Ebola victims. What they, what they did in a very, very short time frame was build basically a steel framework around existing equipment that we already had for aeromedical purposes. Hold on a second. Here we go. Built the steel framework and figured out an appropriate lining system to be able to contain negative pressure for, for self-containment of any, any biological uh, uh, contaminant that enters the tent. How that works is the design is based around three 463L pallets. The first pallet is called the antechamber. It's transition point for the crew members, the medical personnel that are going in and coming out of the tent. It is considered the clean zone. You have what's called um, two blowers, which are right here, the black units, that are basically pulling air from the ambient external environment through, through HEPA filters here into the antechamber at 0.2 inches of water. Inside there, you can go ahead and you can adjust the airflow into the patient isolation module so that you so your isolation modules are at 0.4 inches of water. So a lower pressure in the isolation modules causes the air to be pulled into the antechamber, into the isolate, patient isolation modules, and then it's brought back through the gray filter tube that's on top of all three pallets, brought back down into two HEPA filters in the front, filtered through those, and then released back out into the external environment. So essentially it's one big cycle of air. Air flows in through here, into the antechamber, through the holes in the door here, into the isolation module, all the way to the back of the tent, and then up through the tubes on top, and through filters, and released out. Constant cycle happening on a full total air exchange happens once every three minutes if we have blowers, both blowers working. So 20, I know, I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> my mic is going off. So up to 20 times an hour, we have complete total air exchanges throughout the system. So what that means is when you have a contaminated patient in the isolation module, you're keeping your, your transition point clean, containing that trans that contaminant in those isolation modules, but once air comes out, it's filtered and released and breathable to the external environment, causing no risk to those outside. So the crew members are protected. If you want, you can go ahead and you can videotape what we're doing here. The crew members that go in are a combination of either aeromedical, AE crew members, which are nurses and technicians, or CCAT professionals, which are critical care physicians, nurses, and, and respiratory therapists. We're all trained on how to don and dock the PPE, the personal protective equipment that you see here. It's essentially layers of Tyvek suits, multiple layers, multiple layers of gloves, and a powered air purifier respirator that cycles air inside um, the suit, with, uh, allowing the member to breathe comfortably, but also breathe clean air. The air is sucked in through the through the bullet. purifier, cycled, cycled through the um, the suit, and the filter maintain maintain the stability of that yeah. air coming in, maintain the cleanness. The contaminant that they're exposed to inside doesn't get into the suit. All right. Um, once they once they don out into their PPE, they then enter into the empty chamber here. A crew member who's already in the isolation module then can be relieved, brought out, allowed to have a rest cycle. 
So one member goes right, in, right one member comes out. The member going into the tent is then helping the member that's coming out remove all of their contaminated PPE. I'm recording again. Uh, okay, great. There you go. Okay. So as, as medical crew members are moving in and out of the kit, the training that we're doing right now is essential to make sure that none of the contaminants that are inside the kit are brought to the external environment, potentially affecting or impacting the aircraft, the crew members on the outside, the front end Board. crew members, and the medical personnel. Battery right? eight. So what the infectious disease doctor is doing right now, turn this way a little bit, you see it? What the infectious disease specialist is doing right now is providing instructions to two of our crew members. One medical technician is on his way in, one provider is on his way out. The person who's on his way in is essentially in clean PPE. The person who's coming out is considered contaminated or dirty. The clean person is helping them take all of that dirty gear off so that they don't cross-contaminate and spread any of that outside of the dirty zone uh, the where the patient is. So they're, go they're methodically taking off each layer of PPE, ensuring that yeah, everything stays inside the antechamber. Once, once that uh, equipment is taken off, board, yeah, the infectious the disease board, doctor yeah. allows the patient, the, I'm sorry, the crew member, to exit the antechamber and come back out, get the breath, Go to the bathroom, get something to eat, something to drink, and prepare here. to be able to transition back in again burn. if necessary. Uh, have a whiteboard, I think, back to Once they're done with the transition process, we can go ahead and we'll go into the tip so you can see what the patient modules look like from the inside, what the environment is that we deal with yeah, inside in caring your... for an infected patient. So, all the time, as part right? of Mobility, Mobility Guardian, we're working with our international partners to try to show them our capabilities as well as allowing them to show that show us their capabilities. Collaboration between these partner nations is crucial for us to be able to advance our care. Multiple nations have been interested in our solution for the isolation process when you're in transport. It's a very difficult uh, it's a very difficult skill set to be able to just simply go out, pick up a patient who has a potentially deadly infectious disease and be, be able to bring them back to a facility that is that is fully equipped and qualified to care for them. So having built this in the U.S., multiple partner nations have been interested so they can look at what we've done, either benchmark solutions for their purposes or take the solution that we have and purchase it for their own environment. And basically benefit from the lessons learned that we've done over the last two years, testing this, exercising it, and advancing it from what it was in 2014, 2015, to what we have now. To what we have now. So currently, the the U.S. Uh, airports, under the guise of Transcom, Transcom essentially uh, mandates this use. The only time the TIS can be used right now is approved for Ebola, and that's it. The only time we would transport a live Ebola patient would be under Secretary of, Secretary of State designee. So essentially, the all the way up to essentially the level of the White House has to be able to approve any mission that brings a potentially infected or suspicious Ebola patient back into the United well, States. Well, high right. level approval to to use this function. So we are we are right now the only ones operational units, but there are multiple other countries yeah, who are in the process the of, you know, working with production products who built it in St. Louis for procuring it for their own use.